Hey everyone, it's your boy Tariyoki coming to you live outside of the Cape May Fitness Center and Cape May Dance Company waiting for boy 14 to finish uh, dance class tonight. This is your Saturday night special car video um, as I sit here packed with antibiotics and a leaf or Motrin. Uh, oh, sorry, wipers are still on. Get a little nervous about tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow is the, say it with me, sixth annual Beatles Night, Kate May, part two at Cabanas. That's going to start at seven. Um, I'm starting to think it might be psychosomatic. It seems like uh, my my subconscious knows I have a, a big important show coming up that I got to sing 50, 60 songs at. And so it just sort of starts, um, I, I honestly think uh, half this sickness is in my head, the other half is in my lungs and chest and sinuses. Uh, but I should be okay for tomorrow. Uh, either way, I'll just power through. Um, I'll know when I'm making mistakes, when I'm hitting the right note, but as long as you guys don't know, it's sort of that theater thing. I used to tell all my actors at Elaine's, the only time the audience knows that you've made a mistake is if you tell them. Now, in that style of theater, I would often tell them I made a mistake, um, but I fully intend to hit all the notes tomorrow, or if I don't hit all the notes, I intend to make you think that I hit all the notes. I uh, didn't do much today, and so I was uh, kind of recuperating. I uh, took the boys to Shrek rehearsal at the high school today, and spent the rest of my morning finishing my rewatch of The Office. Now that I've completed the series for a second time, I can tell you, uh, with complete uh, confidence watch seasons two through seven very good uh, watch the last two or three episodes of season eight and season nine otherwise they're pretty forgettable uh, the final episode of course uh, very satisfying uh, not among the best finales of all time but it was a pretty good one um, I noticed uh, all the new characters that came in for the finale episode, one of them was a very young Dakota Johnson, who is the daughter of, I believe, Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson. I know she's Don Johnson's daughter. I'm not sure about the Melanie Griffith part. But she is the star of those uh, very risque, very mommy adult Fifty Shades movies. Uh, and I liked her in a very funny show called Ben and Kate that was on Fox for about half a season a few years back. Um, also discovered a really, really beautiful song uh, in the final season of The Office. There's an episode that takes place entirely on the Schrute Beat Farm. And I watched an interview with Rain Wilson, who plays Dwight Schrute, that that episode was meant as what they call a backdoor pilot to a Dwight Schrute spinoff to The Office called, I don't know, Schrute Farms or something. Uh, and looking at it a second time with that knowledge, I was like, yeah, you know, it pretty much set up the whole world of uh, the Dwight Schrute, the Schrute Beat Farms and established a lot of characters. His, I'm sorry, you hear the sleet? in the snow. It's another beautiful night here in uh, the southernmost part of New Jersey, jutting out two miles to sea. A nice wintry mix of sleet and snow. Anyway, that episode I think was just called The Farm, and it was basically a pilot episode for the Dwight Schrute spinoff of The Office. It was actually a pretty affecting uh, episode. You could tell they were introducing a lot of characters uh, that were going to come into play later on. But at one point, the Schrute family sits around a porch singing a song, and the song they sing it for like 30 seconds and the song just go oh, someone's parking in front of me it's not the cops I'm not having a stroke see not having a stroke uh, the Schrute family just singing along to it and it just caught me so I spent about 25 minutes googling uh, the couple of lyrics I heard in the office it turns out to a very beautiful song by a band called the Decembrists and it's called Sons and Daughters and I think it's a song I might ask my acoustic partner Tim Joyce to learn for this summer really nice simple Simple but very uh, affecting song. Uh, Sons and Daughters by the Decembrists. If you want to YouTube that, and then leave a comment telling them that I sent you. Maybe they'll re share my video. We can all get famous together. Uh, I'm about halfway through L.A. Requiem, uh, the Robert Crace novel, which is starring Elvis Cole, but is really the Joe Pike uh, origin story. I just sort of forgot how harrowing his origin was. It was really difficult reading, but very affecting reading. Robert Crace is just a great writer. He's not too flowery. He's not too dense. I'm a big fan of Orson Scott Card, who's a phenomenal uh, science fiction writer. But he writes, like, four levels too smart 
for me. Um, Robert Crace is only two levels too smart for me, so I get most of it. And um, I wrote a series of mystery stories a few years back in Exit Zero that, that are a complete attempted ripoff of Robert Crace's style. So if he ever, ever reads one of my stories, which I doubt he ever will, I'm in big trouble. Uh, I think that's about it. Kind of a short video. I think we're under 10 minutes so far. I uh, just wanted to keep um, creating new content. Uh, I'm going to be working with my boy Angelo after the weekend to get better at doing more interesting visuals here instead of just looking at my face and then going, Oh, look, weather. No cats tonight. This is a bag full of fidget spinners. This is a, um, what do they call it? The, uh, the Nacho Libre mask. The, uh, ka. Henry and I went to Monday Night Raw a few weeks back, and that was a great show. He, a luchador, his luchador mask, which he left in the car. Took it all the way to Philadelphia and uh, left it in the car. But that was a really good time, that WWE uh, event. Uh, we think Ronda Rousey was supposed to show up because they sort of announced her, and then like some music played that seemed like it was introducing her, and then nobody walked out, so everyone just kind of, eh, we'll just forget that happened. Um, but Ronda Rousey and the WWE, yeah, they, those guys aren't messing around. Uh, they've been around a long time. Vince McMahon knows what he's doing. I was a huge wrestling fan until I was about 12. You know, now I watch with Henry on occasion, keep up with the storylines, and it's, um, you yeah, know, good, clean, clean-ish family fun. Uh, what else we did? I cooked today my world-famous chicken tenders. The secret is in the panko breading. Get the panko breading, egg wash, a little bit of flour so it sticks, and then you just fry it in about a quarter inch of oil. Leave them a little bit on the tender side, almost close to underdone, but just perfectly done. Oh man, good stuff. Then I uh, microwave some potatoes, a little about halfway cooked, slice them up, finish them in the pan with a little bit of vegetable oil, salt, pepper, sometimes garlic. I put garlic in the panko bread mix. Uh, what else did I do today? I had about four Coke Zeros. Uh, gosh, that's about it. Uh, so don't forget, tomorrow night, say it with me, 6th Annual Beatles Night, Kate May, Part 2. Uh, next week, I'm back at the Rio Station on Friday night. It would be great to see some of you guys at the Rio. Uh, that's been struggling the last few weeks. I'd hate to lose that gig because I've been there off and on since 2005. Uh, but you know, it's like your teeth. If you ignore it, it'll go away. Uh, and then next Saturday, I'm hiking up the road to Northampton, Massachusetts with my brother Mike to take part in Dave Stern's 10th annual Beatles Open Mic Night in Northampton, Massachusetts. I'm singing um, two songs by myself, uh, another song with the house band that's going to be Magical Mystery Tour. I think my two songs are Jet and Helter Skelter. And then the band has asked me to sing lead on Magical Mystery Tour. And then I know I'm singing harmonies on another 8 to 12 songs that uh, they just need help with. Um, the following week, March 3rd, of course, March 2nd, back at the Rio. March 3rd, the Smithville Community Center, Smithville, New Jersey. Uh, that's the third annual Beatles open mic hosted by the Love Me. It's a, it's just, the, the Billy Joel's coming up. I'm still banging away on the Last Will script that's going to be at the Iron Pier. Uh, so I'll, I'm just kind of rambling now. Uh, so subscribe. Yes, Wendy, there's a little bell shaped thing right where it, next to where it says subscribe and that sends you a little notification. You'll get a little blip on your phone anytime I uh, post a video. Um, coming up towards the end of the month so if you want to get in on that patreon now would be a good time i think it vests in the first of the month i know it's a monthly uh donation if you got a buck i'll take a buck uh that'll be one dollar more than i have and all that money is going into um my creative endeavors the first uh sort of item up for bids is a pa system uh the one i have is currently about 15 years old some of it's working some of it's not uh, so that could use an upgrade, and that's the PA system I'm going to be using for karaoke, uh, for the theater project, and for my live band projects where there isn't a sort of house sound system. Like in Smithville, we use my PA. Uh, I got a line on a couple gigs in Stone Harbor coming up uh, that might be Beatles or Billy Joel. Anyway, I'm um, very medicated and very rambling, and don't let me forget cat litter. 
Um, I'm looking for my closing. Uh, anyway, yes, hit the Patreon. Support that to support uh, the arts. Uh, subscribe. Hit the notifications. Uh, share to your Facebook or your Twitter if you think people might enjoy this kind of thing. Um, I think that's it. I'll stop talking now. Until next time, Erin McFeeders. She suggested this should be my catchphrase. Until next time, be good. <laughs>